In a previous episode, I showed you the amazing discovery from the group Lost Nintendo History, who found a secret buried within the DS Lite hardware which allows you to output video to an external television. The group made this module as a proof of concept, but as you can see, it's very much a prototype device that resides external to the DS console. Enter Rotronics with their internal DS TV out mod that effectively turns your Nintendo DS Lite console into a Switch-like device. Let's take a closer look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today I have an amazing mod to show you. This is the Nintendo DS TV mod version 3.45 from a company called Rotronics. This mod allows you to connect your DS Lite to an external television through the audio jack and output video from your console, effectively making it, dare I say, an early version of the Nintendo Switch or at the very least, a fully functioning Nintendo DS with only one screen. Now, if this mod sounds familiar to you, it probably does because I previously covered the inspiration for this project in a prior episode. Not long ago, I made a video covering the group Lost Nintendo History and their amazing discovery for the Nintendo DS Lite. That discovery was a hidden feature in the DS Lite firmware that, if enabled, allows you to activate the video output feature inherent in the console's firmware. Without that incredible discovery, mods like this would not be possible. Of course, you still need some additional hardware in order to actually capture that footage, which brings us to the subject of this video. The creator of this mod we'll be covering today is named Rob, and he owns and operates the company Rotronics out of New Jersey. And like I mentioned previously, this mod utilizes the TV out discovery from the group Lost Nintendo History but as you can see in a much more compact form factor. It's truly amazing the amount of engineering that went into miniaturizing the original mod so that it can fit into the very limited space inside the Nintendo DS Lite case. Anywho, if you enjoy learning about mods like this as well as other interesting retro gaming content, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel for plenty more weekly mod videos just like this one. All right, so I'm gonna start off by showing you what's included in the Rotronics DSTV mod kit. Then I'll show you how to install it, discuss the key features of the mod, go over the pros and cons, and of course provide you with my overall thoughts. So the first thing we have in this kit is the custom PCB. This is what interfaces the DS Lite console and outputs the video signal to the headphone jack. It's quite compact compared to the original board designed by Nighthack of Lost Nintendo History. Also included is this rather long ribbon cable which connects the DS Lite's upper screen LCD connector to the Rotronics PCB. And the last items in the kit are a couple of 75 ohm resistors and some 0.1 microfarad capacitors. These things are pretty small so you'll need a steady hand to solder them in. So that's everything that comes in the kit. Now you have the option to install this mod with or without a speaker. I of course want to install it with a speaker. Like most Game Boy Macro mods, I'll be utilizing a Nintendo Switch speaker. These are fairly slim and should be able to fit nicely given the limited amount of space we'll be working with inside the DS Lite. And lastly, in order to get the video signal out of the DS, you'll need a 3.5mm to RCA cable. One like this that splits the left and right audio channels should work perfectly. Now, just like the original DSTV out mod that I previously covered, you will need to flash the DS Lite with custom firmware. Since I'll be using this mod on my previously flashed DS, I won't be covering that process in this video. However, Rotronics has some very good instructions on his website on how to flash the custom firmware onto the DS. I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the video description below. Anyway, now that we've seen all the parts I'll be using for this project, let's get to modding this DS Lite. Alright, so like I stated previously, this DS has already been flashed with the custom firmware and had the top screen removed. To see how I did that, check out my video on the original DS TV out mod, which I'll have linked down below. Now with the DS open, go ahead and remove the LNR triggers. I also removed the Wi-Fi module to give myself more room to work with. 
I then removed the digitizer ribbon cable from the motherboard. Next, let's remove the motherboard by unfastening the two Phillips screws. With the motherboard out, I removed the original DSTV out ribbon cable. Of course, if you're doing this at home, this would probably most likely be the ribbon cable for the top screen. Great, now remove the lower LCD by delatching the bail on the connector. Next, we need to remove the two ferrite beads shown here. Adding some solder and heating the pad should make quick work of them. And this is what it should look like with both removed. Next, we need to carefully cut the traces between the top pads where the ferrite beads used to be and the adjacent vias above them. Use a multimeter to confirm the continuity has been severed. And here you can see the two cut traces. Next, we need to grab two of the 75 ohm resistors that came with the kit and solder them between the two points with the cut traces in order to bridge them. You'll need some flux, patience, and a steady hand to accomplish this. And this is what the final result looks like. Next, grab some scrap, thin gauge wire and bridge the lower pads of the resistors we just installed together to the lower bottom right pad of the ferrite bead we removed. Then cut any excess wire. It's kind of hard to explain this step in words, but this is what the final result should look like. Next, pre-tin the test pad labeled P02 and then solder one end of the included resistor to it. This pad is used for tapping into the select button signal. Again, this is a very small component, so definitely take your time. Then pre-tin the other end of the resistor and connect a wire to it. I cut a piece that's roughly 10 inches in length, which is more than I need, but I can always cut it down later. And this is what it should look like. Next, solder a wire to test pad P09, which is for the left trigger, P06, which is for up on the D-pad, P07, which is down on the D-pad, P08, which is for the right trigger, and BT positive and negative, which will be used to power the audio amp. You'll want to manage the wires as shown to keep them as flat to the motherboard as possible, and you'll also want to route them all to the upper right corner as shown here. I also added some Kapton tape over each solder point to prevent any potential shorts. On the other side of the motherboard, place the DSTV out PCB with the ribbon cable connector oriented to the right side so we can see how short we need to cut the wires. Once the wires are cut to length, begin soldering them to their corresponding through holes on the PCB. They are all very clearly labeled. Once they're all soldered in, solder two additional new wires to the through holes labeled CVBS, which is for the composite video signal, and ground. I'm using a slightly thicker 26 gauge wire for this. After all the wires have been soldered, let's move our attention to the rear shell. If you haven't already, remove the stylus holder, which is secured by three Phillips screws. With a permanent marker, I began marking the areas that I'll need to remove with my Dremel. I strongly recommend using a tool like a Dremel as this will make the job significantly easier, cleaner, and quicker. I used my flush cutters on this side to remove the larger chunks first, then I came in with my routing bit to gently grind off the excess material to make a smooth, flat surface. Once all the trimming is completed, reinstall the LCD to the motherboard. 
And also don't forget about the digitizer ribbon cable. Now grab the long ribbon cable that came with the kit and insert it into the upper LCD connector with the contacts facing down. Then fold it down and to the right at a 90 degree angle. Then wrap it around to the back of the motherboard so it looks like this. You want the cable to be as flat as possible. Around the back, you need to bend and fold the ribbon cable so it looks like this before it's ultimately connected to the DSTV out PCB. You want to make sure the ribbon cable runs between the DS and GBA cart readers exactly as shown, using Kapton tape to make sure everything stays flat and in place. Now prep the front shell by installing the buttons and membranes. Then carefully drop in the motherboard into the front shell housing. Then secure it with the two Phillips screws, one of which is below the DSTV out PCB. Then secure the DSTV out PCB to the motherboard with some double sided tape. Next, solder the CVBS composite video wire to this leg of the headphone jack and the ground wire to this one. Then solder the two wires for the switch speaker to these two pads shown here. The wires can go to either of the two pads as it makes no difference. And this is what it should look like. Now go ahead and install the triggers. Gently place the rear shell over the motherboard and then secure it by fastening all the screws. Then install the DS battery and cover. And lastly, pop in your favorite game and enjoy. While this is an incredible mod, it is definitely for those who are up to the challenge. The limited amount of space inside the DS Lite shell makes this mod fairly difficult. On top of that, there is quite a bit of fine soldering involved, in addition to the meticulous wire management in order to get everything to fit. Pair that with the shell modding, and we have what I consider to be the most difficult mod I've done on this channel to date for a handheld console. Regardless, now that we're done with this mod, let's go over what this thing can do. So this has the same feature set as the original DSTV out mod, except of course now all the modes and functions are activated through various button combinations, which I'll quickly go over. First, to swap the upper and lower screen, you need to press and hold the left trigger and select button then press up to toggle between the upper and lower screens. This feature is what makes it possible to play DS games on a single screen, which is pretty awesome, and makes the macro a viable way to not only play Game Boy Advance games, but DS ones as well. Next, in order to enter picture in picture mode, again, press and hold the left trigger and select, then press down on the D-pad to run through the various picture in picture modes. Now you may notice that the picture in picture window is somewhat translucent and not easy to see. So in order to change the opacity, simply press and hold the right trigger and select, then tap the up button. You have several levels of opacity, which is actually fairly useful if you want to see both the top and bottom screen at the same time, but don't want to lose screen real estate to the picture in picture window. You can for the most part see the entire screen with the picture in picture being slightly translucent. And of course, there is the video out feature, which is, in my opinion, a pretty clean video signal with no noticeable noise. The fact that this is integrated inside the shell and fed through the audio jack is amazing. I think this mod has been well executed given the constraints of the DS Lite platform. So with all the features out of the way, let's get into the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, I have to say I think it's extremely incredible that Rob was able to design a mod that fits within the DS Lite shell. There's quite a bit of hardware in there, and I think he was able to integrate it extremely well given the limited space of the console. I love how he integrated the various modes through the use of button combinations. And incredibly, you're able to pass both audio and video through the headphone jack, which is incredible. This allows you to capture footage or even live stream content directly from your DS Lite. Now, while there is a lot to love about this mod, there are some cons which you should consider. First, like I said before, this is an extremely difficult mod and is probably the toughest I've done on a handheld. There are many advanced level tasks that need to be done in order to complete the project. Soldering small components, managing wires, cutting traces, 
and removing material from the shell. There is a lot of room for error unfortunately when performing this mod. Another thing is that I wish the ribbon cable was a bit more easier to route. It would be absolutely amazing to have a custom ribbon cable for this mod. Something else to consider is that while the stereo audio is mixed, it is only output through the left channel when connected to the television. This is obviously unavoidable since the DS Lite headphone jack only supports stereo audio, with one of the channels being dedicated to the video signal. Not a big deal, although it is something to note. Another con is that when put back together, the console has bulging in some areas due to the limited space inside the DS. I'm sure I could have routed some of the wires a bit more carefully and saved some valuable real estate, but given the difficulty of the mod, it was the last thing on my mind. So while there are some cons, I fully understand the constraints that come with modding the Nintendo DS Lite. There is not a lot of space inside the console to allow for the installation of products like this. Regardless, I'm hoping that Rotronics iterates on his design and perhaps improves on the overall installation experience. As of right now, this mod is reserved only for those who are fairly experienced modders. And for those of you who are interested in attempting this mod, Rob has told me that he expects it to go in sale sometime in September. So if you are interested in being notified of when it does go on sale, be sure to follow Rob on Twitter at Rotronics. Also check out his website, which I'll have linked down below. So there you have it, the internal Nintendo DS TV mod from Rotronics. An incredible step toward a fully functioning single screen DS that can output video from the headphone jack to an external television. As always, I'm curious about what you all think. Will any of you be getting one of these kits for your Nintendo DS Lite console? Definitely let me know by leaving a comment down below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.